Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Today I have with me Dr. Anand Mandapur, Senior Consultant Head for Critical Care Medicine, to discuss your queries on adult vaccination. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome to the live show. Thank you for joining us. And Doctor, uh, can you please uh, tell me uh, what are the recommended vaccination for adults and how often they should be administrated? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, Jitendra, for uh, having me on this uh, LinkedIn live. Normally, we hear a lot about vaccination in kids. For all practical purposes, uh, we all feel that vaccination is only for kids. But there is a good amount of vaccination which is there for adults also, which is somehow has not got a good information to the society. A lot of information is still lacking. People still ask us, uh, I'm adult, I'm 35, I'm 40 years, why should I get a vaccination? Vaccination by and large, uh, is of pediatric population. No, it's not the case. So vaccination is uh, very much required even for adults also. Lots of diseases we can prevent because of good vaccination. So adults do need vaccination just like pediatric population. There are different varieties of vaccination. For example, everybody must have recently come to know after the COVID, you know, that adults also need vaccination. So because of COVID, there is so much of information about vaccination even for adults. There are different varieties, just like you have influenza vaccine for adults, you have a pneumococcal vaccine for adults, you have human papilloma virus for adults, especially for females, you have meningococcal vaccine, you have hepatitis vaccine. There are so many list of vaccines which can and should be given to adults to prevent them from a very severe life-threatening infection. Okay, doctor. Doctor, are there any specific vaccines that a particular particularly crucial for adult based on age, health conditions or lifestyle? Yeah, so vaccinations do also depend on the age. That's very important. Second thing is not everybody in an adult, unlike a pediatric population, requires vaccination. There are certain diseases or certain risk factors for a person is prone, wherein there is a chance of getting a very severe disease, like fitting disease. Those people are at a high risk of developing those those people should develop, should get these vaccines to prevent them from going to severe disease. For example, if you take influenza vaccine, which we all know. So everybody above the age of six months, they should get influenza vaccination and they should be given annually. It's not that it is going to last only for one year. It's because that every year the influenza changes its features. So the one which you're using for the last year, previous year may not work for the next year. So in that context, Every year, any person above the age of six months should get influenza vaccine compulsively. Now that you know COVID is again resurfacing, that's the talk of the town nowadays, and people are also talking about booster dose of COVID. So all adults, you know, especially who are at a very high risk of developing a very severe COVID form of disease, they're also you know in need of a booster dose. You need to get a booster dose, especially who are at a very high risk of developing COVID, and you need to get it the same one we had previously taken. So do not change the brand what have previously taken. And I, I'm sure that most of you must have taken two doses of COVID vaccine during the peak uh, COVID pandemic, uh, probably in 2021. So minimum nine months should have lapsed between that. Now you're eligible to take one more booster dose because news, you know, virus is coming. So it's not, uh, you know, very high risk people should be very much on alert and consult your local medical practitioner and, uh, you know, weigh the risk benefit ratio and get the vaccination done. So every age has its own vaccine. Uh, for example, human papilloma virus is a very common uh, one virus which is responsible for the cancer of genital tract in ladies. So this vaccine uh, can effectively prevent nearly 88% of the cancers in that population. And like, you know, age group, if you take between nine to 26 years, from 27 to 40 years, there are two different age groups. And the best ideal age is between 11 to 12 years. So all these people should uh, get human papilloma vaccine. vaccine. The longer you wait, it is not that, uh, you know, effective. So all this in this particular age group. So there are, you know, in young number of list of vaccines as adults should get, uh, because there's a lack of information, many people are deprived of an adequate vaccination. Okay, okay. How can an adult determine the safety of vaccines and what are the common side effects? Uh, by and large, all the vaccines are relatively safe. Okay. Uh, normally, you get, uh, you know, you, at the site of injection, you might get a little bit of pain, swelling, tenderness, maybe fever. Uh, sometimes you can get a little rashes also, sometimes very high fever also. So, by and large, some, in, in case they are egg based vaccines, 
if you're allergic to egg, then you can have allergic to that, some rashes, some muscle pain, all those things can happen. But by and large, these vaccines are very, very safe. You must have heard during COVID time that you know vaccines were responsible for some increase in the blood clot risk. So all those things, there have been, yes, uh, reported cases, but uh, if you consider the risk-benefit ratio, the benefit is really, really, you know, uh, outweighs the risk. So all these vaccinations are very important. Uh, you know, every everything comes with a price. Everything comes with a little bit minus side effect. Ultimately, you have to weigh the risk and benefit ratio. If risk is pretty high, don't go for that. Especially that we advise during pregnancy because pregnancy is also a very special condition. Many people do require vaccination. And during pregnancy, whatever we do, everything we do, we always take a risk benefit ratio. So if the benefit is really, really good, the risk is very minimal, then we'll say go ahead with that vaccination or go ahead with that particular treatment. So everything comes with this small risk, but by and large, when you are considering a vaccine, they're all pretty safe. Sometimes you are getting a couple of vaccinations on the same day. That's also fine, provided you are taking a different site. So you can take two, three vaccines on the same day as well. Uh, that's that much safe. Maximum will have a little bit of pain, tenderness, mild fever that can be easily, you know, treated with the paracetamol. So by and large, uh, you know, the, the society has a lot of misconception that vaccines are not good, they are not safe, uh, they will not prevent disease and all those things. But by and large, they are very safe and the benefit they give you is really tremendous and you should go for vaccination, keeping in mind a little bit of minus one side effects. Okay. Like how long do this the side effects last and should they take any booster dose for this? The side effects usually last for only a few days, maybe two to four days, that's all. So uh, side effects do not last for a longer time. The effect of uh, vaccination, you know, last depends on the type of vaccination again. Like, you know, I told you, influenza vaccine you need to take every one year. So that has to be taken. Usually we advise everyone to take it in the month of September, October. And in pregnancy, we advise, suppose that in the third trimester, they cannot wait further. They can even take it in the month of July, August also. So this usually lasts for about one year. If you take COVID vaccine itself, it will last around six months to 12, you know, 12 months. So after that, you can take a booster dose depending on the necessity. Some vaccines, for example, hepatitis B can really give a very long lasting result of protection. And normally in those situations, we usually test for the adequacy and the safety of the antibody level what it has produced and if they are really adequate you can just simply you know do it again at the end of uh, two to five years and if that is low then only go for vaccination so this vaccination can give a really long lasting protection for example if you have taken bcg immediately after childbirth that is give you almost a lifelong protection from severe from tuberculosis so so by and large these people these vaccines give us a good duration of protection and as per the individual recommendation you have to go for the booster dose weighing the risk as well as the benefit and at the same time you please consult your local medical practitioner about the booster doses requirement and go, go ahead with it. Okay. Doctor, how do chronic health conditions impact vaccination recommendations for adults? Yeah, so that's very important because if you see the worldwide trend, the leading cause of death, infection, especially the lung infection, is the fourth most important and leading cause of death uh, in the world as per WHO. So, Vaccines, what they do is they prevent you from developing a severe disease. They may not completely protect you from developing a disease, but they will definitely protect you from developing a severe disease. It is, of course, it is good to not have a disease, but in case you develop disease as well, it is better to have a mild disease rather than a severe disease. So all these vaccines prevent us from developing a very severe disease. So this is very important. See, uh, if you see the statistics of uh, our uh, life expectancy of Indians, uh, uh, we in our country, uh, as of right now, while we speak, our life expectancy is almost within 71 years. So every year is increasing by 0.33%. If you compare the previous 20 years, that was around 61 years. In the last 20 years, we have almost increased our life expectancy by almost 10 years. So uh, vac good vaccination and good prevention of infection is one of the causes for that. Okay, so uh, that's the reason that you know elderly people, especially people who are high risk, like people having a lung disease in the past, kidney disease, patients who are on dialysis, patients who are on heart disease, heart failure. So all these people are at a very high risk of development because many times they'll be all fine, comfortable doing their all routine activities at home, even doing their work also. One infection will get them to the hospital and sometimes, they, unfortunately, they end up in series of complications because of infection and sometimes we lose them also. So to preventing an infection, 
in a high risk person like this and some people will have a deficiency of our immune system some people would have lost the spleen very important organ for a different system either by disease process or during you know trauma accident they have undergone a surgery to remove the spleen all these people are at a very high risk of developing infections and these vaccinations prevent development of a very severe disease let it be an infection of the lung let it be infection of the brain or let it be any other infection of the bloodstream so all these vaccines are very important to protect ourselves from developing a major life threatening disease okay doctor doctor look can you please tell me what are the vaccines safe recommended for pregnant individuals okay so pregnancy is a very special uh, and a very delicate condition and uh, every pregnant lady should get a tetanus and tdap vaccine that is tetanus diphtheria pertussis vaccine that is a must and influenza vaccine is also very important because the risk posed by developing influenza and pneumonia uh, is very very crucial with respect to the mother as well as the baby so even if uh, they fail to get in the first i think they can take it in any trimester of the pregnancy even they can take it in the third trimester also because once you take this vaccine it gives a good protection to the you know baby newborn baby even up to 6 months to 7 months after the delivery also so uh, in that context not only the mother gets the protection the baby also gets the protection from this and regarding other hepatitis b vaccines covid vaccine all those things you have to weigh the risk benefit ratio uh, in pregnancy uh, whether the risk is really very high and the benefit given is very high then uh, you should go if there is a benefit is very high risk is very less is risk is very high you just avoid that so but influenza and uh, tt are the vaccination that needs to be taken in pregnancy compulsory okay doctor thank you doctor are there any additional vaccinations would you recommend for adults uh, related to their age related health conditions uh by and large i have almost narrated all of them so meningococcal vaccine is the one vaccine of course it is there uh, in pediatric population also uh, pneumococcal vaccine so all adults above the age of 65 should develop should get this pneumococcal vaccine because pneumococcus is one of the important uh, healthcare hazard it can cause a very severe pneumonia very severe life threatening condition it can affect the brain also so all adults more than 65 years should develop should get pneumococcal vaccine and people nowadays we are uh, we also give chicken pox vaccine shingles vaccine and post exposure prophylaxis of rabies vaccine influenza is there across above, above the age of 6 uh, months hepatitis b vaccine is there and uh, pneumococcal uh, after the initial Uh, vaccination they should get a booster dose if at all they are at a very high risk of developing this of course covid vaccine is there so almost all the vaccines which are there they are very important especially more so your diabetic diabetic people are at a very high risk of developing infections so and these people should get developed and get every year in plus the vaccine they should get a pneumococcal vaccine and as and when required they should develop shingles vaccine chicken pox vaccine and if you are traveling you should get uh, i mean that that's a different matter but uh, you should get all these vaccines that are they are they are very very important okay doctor thank you doctor can you please tell me are there any common myths and misconceptions about vaccines yeah, yeah, a lot of misconception about vaccines first thing is we believe that vaccines are not safe but they are actually safe second thing is vaccines are not at all effective and they do not uh, usually people say i got this vaccine a but i tell the same this is a what the point of getting this vaccine so vaccine will not prevent you from developing the disease vaccine will definitely prevent you from developing a severe disease so even if i have a mild disease that is very well fine i recover without any issues without any complications but if i develop a very severe disease then i pose myself at a very high risk of mortality that is death so in that context there is a myth that vaccines if i take a vaccine i should be 100% protected no vaccines will definitely give protection with uh, respect to development of a severe disease vaccines at the same time do you know help us to decrease because of a very good uh, you know herd immunity very good extensive vaccination in our country we are one of the best performers in the entire world during covid time that's because of very good vaccination so in that context vaccines are very good they save your life uh, they will protect you from developing a severe disease a uh, little bit of minor side effects some other thing there is a misconception that sometimes vaccine itself will give us the same disease for which it is vaccinated so that misconception or conception also there sometimes they can give a right a very rare and very severe diseases of affecting the brain affecting the nerves affecting the muscles those things are reported cases are there but that is really really uncommon so in a commoner you know if you take the practicality by and large vaccines are very good vaccines are safe little bit uh, some people might find them little expensive 
but it is really value for the money you are paying because they will prevent you from developing major life threatening severe disease. No, okay, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for your time and giving valuable insights on vaccination, which is related to all from child to all uh, elderly age people. And thank you for joining us. And to get to know more information about Dr. Mahamdapur, you can log into our uh, sakrawalhospital.com and you can go through his uh, and book an appointment for, with him for personal consultation. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Dr. Thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Have a good day.